Shout out to Kamala Harris, it's your girl Rita B. I ain't no rapper, but I got bars. Yo, Kamala, Kamala, ooh. I'm so lit, I don't know what I'ma do. Now that she running with biting, I'm vibing. You mad and you act a black woman made you. She repping AKs, I'm repping DST, but we are all the same. Call it Greek unity. She is my sister and I am her pusher. If it ain't black excellence, it is irrelevant. Why you mad? She with a white man. Better love while you still can. Worry less about her husband and more about what her heart stands. Cause representation is what we need. And you ain't gonna sit here and tell me that the first black woman VP ain't what little black girls need to see. Check your racism, your sexism, your bigotry at the door. All your insolence and your ignorance, we ain't trying to hear it no more. Kamala Harris is here to stay. Despite all the poison you try to spray. If black is king, she is a queen. Guaranteed she rides anyway. Uh, Kamala, Kamala, ooh. I'm so lit, I don't know what I'ma do Now that she running with biting, I'm vibing You mad and you act a black woman made you She repping AKs, I'm repping DST But we are all the same, call it Greek unity She is my sister and I am her pusher If it ain't black excellence, it is irrelevant so, It's Kamala, not Kamala Put some respect on her name Past time to stop dissing black women We be fighting villains just for existing Like Obama, they wonder she all the way black Graduated from Howard, forgot about that Discrediting her record, no context of facts Judging like you God, need to fall back Deflecting, disrespecting, ask yourself why I do power for women eat you up inside, huh? Why you wanna hate on Kay Harris? You the one mediocre, but you acting like she average. Your accomplishments amount to pay the Instagram spat. Why she all up in the Senate, spit it back straight battle? And now nah, I ain't saying that she perfect, but I'm a thousand percent that she worth it. Cause we cut from the same cloth. I'm historically black. We coming for it all. The woman is formidable, unforgettable. Living history, I assess as wildest dreams. Taking a stand for men like you and me is not a decision. I gotta contemplate. Kamala to make America great. Kamala to make America great. Kamala will make America great. Kamala Kamala will make America great. Kamala, Kamala, ooh. I'm so lit, I don't know what I'ma do. Now that she running with biting, I'm vibing. You mad and you act a black woman made you. She repping AKs, I'm repping DST, but we are all the same. Call it Greek unity. She is my sister and I am her pusher. If it ain't black excellence, it is irrelevant. Come on, come on, come on. It's time, y'all. It's time. It's this thing that I'm holding in my hand, this telephone, this camera. It is quite powerful. Um, social media is powerful. We can do something with this. If we want to change, we can really, truly make it happen. You know, we sit out here and talk about, oh, we need the next so-and-so and this and that. No, you don't. No, you don't. Start in your own home. Start with you. <laughs>
Speaking of time, what's poppin'? Happy Wednesday. Speaking of time, 13 days left to the election, y'all. What is gonna do, Hoppo? Hopefully we're gonna do the right thing. We're gonna do the only thing there is to do and vote the sucker out the White House. Come on, y'all. That's not, that's a no-brainer. And, you know, I'm speaking from the heart of the matter. And, um, you know, just want to say hello and happy Wednesday to everybody tonight. Javon will be here momentarily, but we are going to have us a good, good conversation. I want to say hello to everyone who watches the show and thank you for uh, being a part of our experience every Wednesday and every, every Wednesday evening and every Saturday afternoon or well, morning into the afternoon. So how's everybody doing out there? What, what's happening? How was your week? Happy hump day. What's going on? I want to hear from you. What's happening? Today, we have on the show Terry Dexter, who is a phenomenal singer, songwriter, and actress. And she's going to she's gonna come and share. Um, first, we'd like to ask her how she's doing and how she's getting through this whole thing called pandemic. And, and uh, as an artist, as a human, and, and what her experience has been, one of Detroit's finest, one of D-Town's finest. And, you know, we'll be able to to uh, chop it up with her a bit about what she's got coming out, what she's been working on. And I know because of the climate that we're living in right now, it has been an inspiration for song, perhaps, or for uh, a movie idea, you know, because um, it all seems like we're living in one big old movie idea, you know, or nightmare, devastation of a nightmare, um, even. But I'm Therese. And you are listening to In the Basement with Javon and Therese. And Javon, boop, 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 is right there. How you doing, Silky Smooth? I'm groovy, man. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Good, good, good. Just want to make sure that everything is on and popping. That was the best pop in because you were right. I said, uh, as soon as I introduced myself, I said, and Javon, bloop, bloop, bloop. You came in like uh, Andorra from Bewitch. <laughs> Ta-da. Ta-da. That's that's how we that's how we do. Hold on, still trying to get this voice, this vocal thing, working right. Got to sound good, you know. Okay, okay. Trying to make it work. I can't wait. You know, I told you I got myself a birthday present coming. So let's. Uh, I just like let that let that be the cure all. Uh, what you I get, Harlow? What you get? Upgraded technology. That's mm. all. I, I I had to get it for myself. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to make it do what it do. You mm -hmm. know, and, and that's that's something you know that's important that we invest in ourselves in a way that is not only something like a mini skirt. If you wear mini skirts, something that's going to make you feel good for the moment, but something that is going to help you in your long-term goals, your dreams, your desires. Absolutely. You know, now for me, I'm looking at my five-year plan, right? Okay. And I keep talking about this, right? I keep talking about in five years, I want, I, I want to be retired. I want to um, do this kind of thing um, full time, you know, like maybe not every day. This is, this is very grueling. You can't, this is this is it takes a lot of work and and um 
I, I wish I had somebody um, who had been chronicling or if, if I had been chronicling this process from the gate to now, because I, I posted something actually that said, people think what you do is easy until they try to do it themselves better than you. Because people look at this show and they'll be like, yeah, I'm gonna do that, but my show is gonna be better. My show, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna do. Uh huh. I see you. I see I, you. And I, you can do the show, but you you have to understand that it's not just press and play. I mean, maybe for some people, but for me, work. God damn it. And I'm proud of it. I'm not complaining at all. It's a labor of love, but it's a lot of behind the scenes work. Listen, I've been up to radio stations. You know what I mean, like public radio stations, BLS, you know, the ones we are most familiar with on the East Coast. And it is still work behind the scenes. And, you know, I think there's something to be said for people who make it look easy, you know, um, and then, you know, particularly this internet thing, which is a new, a new way for a lot of us. And the fact that it isn't uh, as consistent and free flowing as this, you know, like ra radio waves that have been around a lot longer, you know, but, you know, I guess when they start to really kick this 5G into full play, you know, it'll be like, yeah, number press and play. Exactly. Exactly. Pop. You know, when they when they kick the 5G off, you know, and the technology and, you know, that once operated probably won't work anymore anyway. Um, it'll be a lot more streamlined because, you know, they got to move this currency around. So they know they're going to they're going to build on that that Internet. Sure. Yeah, this this uh, the internet the way it is currently is not strong enough. All the people who are now um, utilizing it in this way and in other ways, people are conducting all of their business on on um, the internet and using Wi-Fi and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so you know, it's just important that we invest in our dreams and in our future. And I, I plan on doing this, you know, for the long haul. Um, this is what I want to do this in conjunction with some other stuff, but this is a big part of it. You know what I'm saying? And, um, mm -hmm. it, it, it has to, it has to flow right. And I want it to be the best show that it could possibly be, uh, you know? Um, and so you invest in that, you invest in your future. Um, you also invest in your future. And I heard you, I heard every word that you were saying, I have you on the, uh, trust me, I'm Tell me too much. Uh, I've been, <laughs> been doing it. <laughs> yeah, and and it's no lie. It's a I've I've earned that um, nickname. But um, <laughs> cute actually. <laughs> it's true though. Um, so uh, see, I did so much right there. I lost my damn thought. Oh, so the other way in which we invest in ourselves is by voting, and which I'm proud to say I actually. Today, um, I went out, casted my ballot, and there you go. That's what's up. Secretive Sally um, has the picture of me, and you know, <laughs> when she, maybe I should call a free bird flying Fabian or something. I don't know, but anyway, <laughs> free bird Frida, you know. Um, Hopefully, I will eventually get the picture and be able to text it or put it up or whatever. But, you know, it's just important that we vote. You know, I, and, and also I want to say I feel bad about this. I have to call our friend, um, the journalist, Nathan James, and ask him for his forgiveness. He asked for a video with me and you encouraging people to vote. Mm -hmm. Um then, you know, I knew that you had gone away and I didn't want to, you know, bother you with that. And so I said, well, would you like uh, for me and Cheryl? Oh, yeah, that'd be great. And But then that just, we just, it's just, it's just a lot going yeah. on. It's hard. And I had even asked some artists, this is, God is good, you know, and, and Turnabout is fair play, but also Karma's a bitch. And this one is that, whatever you want to say. But I learned something, you know, I had asked for a whole bunch of people to send me video of them, you know, saying something encouraging about voting. I did receive two 
um videos two snippets so i need to hurry up and put something together else they're going to think that i was just wasting their time and time is a commodity you don't waste people's time if you value them so anyway I was a little salty because I wasn't getting videos. But then somebody asked me for a video and I wasn't able to give that video in time. You know what it is? And, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll have to, I'll have, I could keep it on me in terms of this because you did ask me and I definitely didn't give it to you. Uh, you know, and it is not without the fact that I heard you and wanted to do the video and still may crank something out. But you know, it's 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 something about when you you know, I'm, I'm finding the younger I get, I need reminders, for certain things that trigger certain things because you know, if I'm doing it by myself, it's easier than having to be in sync with uh, 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 Mo in most cases when she's either ready and wanting and in the mood and uh, dressed. <laughs> <laughs> to do a video. Um, that's always, oh, and speaking of dress, I'm still laughing. <laughs> we, don't, we don't never have to talk about that. <laughs> Can I tell you? <laughs> but I am going to write a rap and I'm a down, I'm a down low, you know, talk about that. I haven't figured it out yet. <gasps> there must be a song, a movie, a play, a sketch, <laughs> something yeah. in that well, I did. Well, I I thought that I would share a tidbit with you, you know, uh, based on <laughs> a tidbit based on something you probably did not know, you know. Okay. Now it, it has shifted a bit over the years, but I am technically a nudist, so I'm part of surprised. my information, huh? You said you're not surprised. Hell no! I know um, you. Uh, yeah, and, you know it, it's it's it, it's so funny because I was like, it, and, and it was such a natural thing for me to just do that, and then it, it and and that's I don't even know if you um, recognize when I actually realized <laughs> when I was like, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, completely, completely. I did not. All I can say is I did not see your face <laughs> at all. <laughs> And your face could have been in the camera, but that's not where I was looking. Sorry. <laughs> I just, look, we had this discussion. You know me, just like I know you. <laughs> you know me. You know me. Stop. You know me. It, it's just that, you know what, you know what's funny also, I think about friendship and getting to know people mm -hmm. is that you, you just said, you just said that you're a nudist, right? Mm -hmm. Now in, in, Thinking about you, that's not a word that would have popped up, right? <laughs> right. Okay. Like, Therese, nudist. No. Like, when we, you know, rapid fire. No. Right. right? It may now, but. <laughs> but. But if somebody had come to me, like, you know how people do shit on the low, trying to like, oh, yeah. And you, what you don't know about your friend, Rez, is that she's, I saw her on a nudist beach. And I'd be like, and? <laughs> it's happened. You know, or if they say, oh, you think you know her, but I bet you didn't know. No, that makes sense. I've not been <laughs> on a new so, but I could see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pop, you're giving the locations away. What are you doing? <laughs> I am not posting that up. <laughs> But that is my blame. No, that's that you listen. <sighs> you know, yeah, definitely. We know we share that spirit about ourselves. With yes, yes, we we that you're my twin flame. There, yeah. There's just something about you know. It, it took a long time. Um, and if you hear my mother tell the stories, uh, uh it took a long time to, for me to conform to you know wearing complete outfits. <laughs> either top or bottom or nothing just you know running through the house but yeah yeah I don't know what it is I still winter is my worst season for a lot of reasons oh I love it I love it I love having to wear sweaters I love I love clothes no. until it's time to take them off I mean I don't mind other people not being clothed I think that's pretty cool but for me <laughs> And then I'm I have going to 
say what? No, then I have a nerve to be a tad bit of a germaphobe because like the tiniest things like uh, like uh, sand and whatever else and things between my toes, oh, can't stand it. So it is what it is. <laughs> you know, Still, I, I have some interesting, I, let me just say, I, I can't I can't really tell the story over this pla on this platform. But I gotta tell you, I've been having some really interesting experiences um with with my people, with my friends. And I don't know if God is testing me, trying to tell me something or you know, I I, I, I don't I just don't get it. But I'm I'm having fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know God is growing us all up that's what she's doing <laughs> she's is that what she's doing? Up. yes God's growing us all up you know God is just you know like uh, what is it you know it uh, making us come to terms with loving all of us flaws and everywhere else <laughs> I see you <laughs> I see LeBron and Pop going back and forth <laughs> In the chat room, which is hilarious. Uh, Hi, Levon. I'm How hoping, are you? I hope God is getting me prepared for heaven. That's what I'm hoping. Mm. Well, how do you know this ain't it? Because because there's an orange buffoon that keeps popping up <clears throat> on into social media, and this can't be. Uh uh. No, there's only Fact. peace. Fact. Peace in heaven. You know. Fact. Although. Fact. Although seeing my man Barack, oh man, listening to him today, uh, I love that dude, man. I love that dude. I, I just, do. I just do. I can't help it. Can't help it. Can't help it. You know. So, so folks that are out there going to do these ballots, one thing that you must be clear about is where you drop these suckers off. Please make sure it is a legitimate box that is going to receive it or go to your county clerk's office to drop it off. You can Google where that is in any county that you live in if you're doing it in advance. And if you're going on the 13th, I mean the third, I'm sorry, to actually place your uh, ballots, please be careful. Please don't be intimidated and please report any suspicions that you may see uh, going on. Um, actually, we'll, I'm going to find out what the number is this year to be able to report any strange things to the uh, authorities, if we have those anymore, um, for anybody trying to do anything like suppression or, or intimidating, and you know, um, and please make sure that you have uh, your contingency plans in place um, for the election process. That week of the third is going to be, um, and I say the week of because you know we probably won't get the results the same day. We're not going to, you know, it may, it may actually even be a couple of days later, <laughs> but, you know, just make sure that um, based on uh, what these terrorist groups are out there saying and doing, that you keep your family safe and probably use that as a week to stay inside around the way and not do too much, you know, straying around in open places and things like that, just so that we can get through this, this rough thatch, whatever it may be, just, you know, just out of prevention. Absolutely. And, you know, my 99.9-year-old grandma mm. is insistent on voting on November 3rd in person. I'm like, Grandma, what? Did, what? No, there be lines. You can't. My mother, oh, I'm going to go up the block to, no, Ma, that November 3rd. Mm. So, New York is getting ready to open up um, October 24th for um, early voting. And them two old ladies, I will drag them <laughs> yeah. early to a drop box if we can find one, which I'm going to research that and, yeah. and take them to the drop box. And that's going to be it. See, my grandmother is really st stubborn and set in her ways. And she feels like if she doesn't turn the thing or go into the poll booth herself then it, it doesn't matter like putting it in the mail she my grandmother but, won't 
gonna take a Tylenol, okay? Because she don't believe in medicine like that. So listen, I hear you're being pain. She don't. She rather suffer, and it's hard watching her. Like, damn, just take take one. Just I just want to like grind one up and put it in her orange juice, man. But she'll bust me up. Like, what what your you grandmother know? has seen in her lifetime thus far, I understand why she wants to go to the to the, the machine and pull it. You know what I mean? She's she's a part of the era that earned that right. You know, she's ninety what? Ninety nine, baby. She, in March, she'll be one hundred years old, and we mm. still put it in if I mess up. So, and gorgeous, simply gorgeous. Yeah, she and I, she, and she, she, look, she wasn't that fine until until I was born. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, yeah. I see how that works. She, she get it from me. No, I'm just kidding. My grandmother was fine. If I could go way, way, way back in the day, and if she wasn't my grandmother, and if she wasn't messing with my grandfather, <laughs> that's not it. And if she wasn't, gonna my, if she wasn't gonna be my mother's mother. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I see you, Grandma. I see now she like rolls. Awesome. She still is she fine. fine. Though. She, she, she and, and she will take and she will take your man. And you'll be mad, but she won't. She like, let me tell you something. She's charming right now. The interesting thing about anybody, um, uh, any of our super seniors, that they are so if, when if they have the 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 um, uh, stamina your grandmother has like to roll in places, you know, and, and still have like all her faculties and everything in place. She is quite charming. She yeah. is quite charming. And, and you know, like who's telling her no? Nobody. Try it. She could be a try it. You yes. try, you try telling my grandmother no, and you will learn quickly. <laughs> Not supposed uh -uh. to. It, it doesn't work. Unless she unless she finds you attractive. Now, my grandmother could find anyone attractive unless you're unattractive. And what I mean by that, I is that it. <laughs> if you're a stud and you a fine stud, you don't have to you if you dress not if you come dapper, if you dapper, period. Grandma's like open for business. Not open for business, but <laughs> She's open to the possibilities. <laughs> Cheryl, and I, Cheryl and I had this, um, it was a CD release party when we did our first CD. And you know the Chateau of Spain, because you, you went there before, I think. You met there for dinner or lunch or with some people, whatever. Anyway, um, we had it there up on the second level, but the I don't know that you saw that you could really open up the floor up there. So hmm. um, it was it was packed it was packed um and mostly it was the lgbt community mostly females too you know all of us in our grandeur and grandmother whispered over to my mother mm, all these studs i might have to take me home one <laughs> Oh boy, <laughs> just as long as they fine, I'm telling you. But don't be light skinned and unattractive. Uh -oh. I, I'm sorry, I don't want to offend anybody. Everybody's attractive to me. But grandma, <laughs> she she's bad with it. She's bad. Her mouth, man. I love her, but she, yeah. an Aquarian woman. I overstand. No, she's an Aries. My mother oh, is your mother, right? I knew one of them. Okay, okay. Yeah, my mom is the Aquarian. Well, not too much difference. Yeah, I don't know about that. My mom it's is an good. angel. <laughs> At least I think so. I love my mommy. She's an Aquarian. She's so sweet. She's so nice. <laughs> Yeah, but, but she's not like your wife. 
<laughs> my wife is something special. Yes, she is. Yes. Um, Your wife is so very special. Love her. Yes. I do. Yes. I really do. They have a natural, a, a natural uh, charisma and a get right at the same time. So, yes. yeah. And both of them are funny. I will say that. They are ahead of their times. Aquarians are known for being ahead of their time. And they bored me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Pops has some information about voting. You can drop off your completed ballot at your local county board of elections office now or at any early voting site in your county between October 24th and November 1st. Today's the 21st, mm -hmm. so we still got a couple of days right before that. Now in New Jersey, they're taking them now, so that's it. Let's do it. We did it today, tonight rather, and that was pretty cool. I'm still sorting through mail, but I got it and moved that first. Yes, and it wasn't. It didn't feel the same as going into the poll and doing your thing mm -hmm. and seeing the going down the the line. You know, if that's what you do or. It, zigzag whatever you do but yeah. um there's a certain amount of okay now let's get it right okay that's done Let, i did my part now you do yours right. right also since we're speaking about this i have not received not one well i've only received one picture of um someone voting mm. i guess nobody wants our little prize but if you do want your prize Send a picture of yourself voting to WJBR Internet Radio. No, WJBR at Javon'sBasement.com. And WJBR um, at Javon, J A V O N N E, basement.com. <laughs> Absolutely. Or you can um, post it on our Facebook page in the basement with Javon and Therese. And we will see it, and you will be eligible for a prize. <laughs> okay, Reze, it's so good to see you. It's good to be seen, and good to see you too. Good to see you too, as always. How was your Wednesday? How was your day today? I'm sorry. I'm sorry that good to see you. That just sparked a memory. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> I wish I could have had a camera on you. Because <laughs> I'd have loved to know you probably were like, what? <laughs> Hilarious. Anyway, listen, stick around. Stick around for the jokes, folks. <laughs> I know, I know. Inside jokes and outside jokes. We got jokes. You know what? It, it just is what it is. My week. So today is my first day on furlough. Hmm. I did not get paid today. Really? And, and what did this happen? So, the, so New York City has decided to put all of its managers on a five-day furlough. Um, so All of its managers in every department for a uh, city and admin? Period, I think. I, I don't know, but I know that in, in my agency, all the managers have to take five furlough days. So today was my first one. It can't be this day. Can't be before a holiday. Can't be after a holiday. Can be after this. Can't be. I'm like, you know what? Fine. Hmm. And it's supposed to prevent layoffs. I'm telling you, anybody saying that this economy is good is lying. I ain't never. I've worked for the city basically all my life, and I have never been laid off, missed a paycheck, a payday, nothing. Okay, this is some craziness. Well, because if they or, didn't do it to the manager, wait, say it again. It's either that or a severe mismanagement of money, you know. 
But you know, sometimes it can be very lucrative to send things in bankruptcy to wipe away any debt that exists. Yeah, but remember this. The clown who has decided that all blue states were getting no federal funding. Hmm. Who knows what that looks like for hmm. real? You hmm. know what I'm saying? That's so, called extortion, and that's illegal. Let's see if he really actually does it. Everything he's done has been illegal. He's done yeah. so many things illegal, which is why he was impeached, but he wasn't removed because the Republican Senate allows him to do whatever and said they would not even have a trial. <laughs> but he, he was impeached by the House of Representatives, which has a d Democrat majority. They held their hearings and they voted to impeach. That means he's impeached. But let me ask a question too, and maybe this is just me, but why would an impeached, although he wasn't removed, we got it, but why would an impeached president be allowed to run again? Because there's no law against it. Who would think that an impeached president would have a, a chance in hell? When when they were formulating the, the Constitution, I mean, there's a lot of things that he did that they didn't think that any American president would ever do. Yeah, but so you that's know, why somebody. So what does it so it's, so in, in your so what exactly did impeaching him other than consume our time do? All right, so that's like saying. Someone commits a crime, any crime, mm -hmm. and you take them to, they go to the grand jury. The case is heard in the grand jury mm -hmm. and the grand jury chooses to indict him, mm -hmm. right? Which an impeachment is the equivalent of an indictment. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to a regular court and jury. Mm -hmm. But when, when the person goes to a regular jury, the jury says, we don't want this. This is stupid. We're not. And the judge is like, you know what? You're right. Throw it out. The judge decides to throw out the case. Mm -hmm. So the Supreme Court Judge Justice, the, the Justice Roberts, he mm -hmm. presided over. The Senate is the jury that says mm -hmm. whether the impeached president gets has to leave. Mm -hmm. If they would have done a trial and and said and convicted, let's just say, then that impeached president would have to leave office. Okay, it's the but Senate. You, you, so, so, so it's the same thing. So, so what did we get out of it? Right. The fact that he's he's been indicted. Impeached is the same word as indicted. So you you so what what we have running is an impeached president. He's indicted. Also, he's in, he's he's an indicted criminal on on a criminal charge known as um uh somebody number one what is it uh co-conspirator number one he's Let already been in he right, shouldn't so, be able to, he shouldn't be able to run so there goes the myth of having to have because you know like there okay so we have marion barry and and donnie both committing crimes, but allowed to run for an office. Is that what we're saying? So there goes the myth of having to have a squeaky king record. Trump was acquitted by the Republican controlled Senate on those two counts of impeachment on January, February. Oh. February, oh, yeah. Yeah, but they didn't they didn't have a trial. They didn't bring witnesses. They didn't that's not a trial. They they just decided they wasn't going to do it. So I don't know what myth. I never heard the myth that you got to have a squeaky clean record. We know well, that a lot of politicians are crooked. It, it, it would it, it's it's our hope that they would be squeaky clean. It's our 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 ideals would is that they would be honorable men or women and or 
trans, non-descript, you know, whatever, that they would be wholesome people with uh, a righteous mind wanting to do the right thing for the people. Hey, hey, David, how you doing, baby? Hey, um, man. But the bottom line is that, you know, this, but this, this here situation that we're in now is exposing the holes, the loopholes, because he's been so terrible and he's done so many illegal things. And the Senate has allowed it to happen in such a way that they have to change some of the laws so that this kind of thing doesn't happen again. They have to. But but it won't be them that change the laws if it means, because if that's the case, then 90% of the folk that are sitting right now won't be near the joint. You know, um, what he did was he normalized the presidency seat so much so that anybody without an education, with a criminal background, with criminal intentions, with with racist uh, whatever um, can can apply within. That's equivalent yep. to an application for a fast food restaurant at this point. We were, yeah. we were you know, in my in my day. Of, of learning about presidencies and, and, and you know, uh, you know, whatever schoolhouse rock couldn't teach me in my days of that, it was, it was, we thought the president's seat was a, a power seat that was held by important people and people that wanted to, hold, you know, like, come on, this is such the indoctrination of education was, was, uh, had us believe in all kinds of farce situations about that particular chair, you know? And I think I think that it was people people in people were held to a higher standard. People who were president up until this recent time had always been held to a higher standard. Barack Obama could have never gotten away with half the crap that this guy is getting away with. Hmm. Bush was an idiot, but he didn't do half the crap that this guy did. Because he was he drunk. Did some dumb stuff. <laughs> right, but he did some dumb stuff. He did some dumb stuff, but not corrupt in the same way that this guy's corrupt. And even he's scratching his head look, look, looking at this fool. You know what I'm saying? Um, Bush checking you, you know you done fucked up. You know right. you. I mean, you know and, you and before <laughs> Clinton did something slimy, but it was about getting a blowjob for crying out loud. Not to say that that was right because he had more power. It was a power structure thing, and she was a young woman. She wasn't a minor, but it's a power and control. I don't know. Whatever he got, you know, he got a little. He got a little sexy. And and you know, but and the Republicans the lost it. the and and the Republicans held that against his wife. Mm. I saw this brother on <laughs> on the news talking about why he wasn't going to vote for Hillary because she allowed her husband to have extramarital affair. What she allowed him, Negro? <laughs> please. <laughs> Next, you know what I'm saying? Come on. Now, mm. yeah, but um. It, you know, the whole the whole thing, I think people, the other thing, though, is that because of the shenanigans that have been going on throughout this administration, um, I think more people are paying closer attention to politics. Well, this I'll is go, I'll, I'll, <laughs> yeah, politics, right? It's, it's, and that, it's like a sideshow. He has reduced it to a reality show. That's that's what it is. So it's easy. Before it was honestly, I have to say, it's pretty boring. Before this asshole showed up, that's why nobody was paying attention. Boring. Right? Before, it was because boring because we we could trust that our government, or at least what we we believe that the president was doing the best thing for the country they we postured believe. like they were they postured like they were right. they postured like they but, wanted to give a damn but they didn't right. you know and and um and he he's just been a 
total dichotomy. He's not even, you know what it is? It's the, it is a train wreck. And I think that we have a, a, a conviction to watching train wrecks. You know, we, it, it's like watching OJ all over again, speeding down the highway, you know? Right. It's like right. how I remember before he actually, you know what I mean? And it's just, and, and, and every time you see it, as much as you want to throw something at the television, in fact, I don't think my downstairs TV is working anymore for as many times as we've thrown things literally at the screen. Those, those, it couldn't take not one more debate. It said, nope, no, nah, I'm not doing this. Now, one more debate, you know. This is going to be a debate tomorrow night. I don't think I'm going to watch that. I, Cause I don't care. I voted already. Well, I'm done. I bet you will. I bet you watch it anyway, because that's what reality television does. It sucks you in. It does. And if nothing else, he's such a damn orange clown. And everybody knows it. Even out of the country, people are like, oh, the President Trump. <laughs> I was yeah, like, they laugh. they laughing. They laughing. And and what's scary, what's really scary and what really needs to happen. <sighs> is our educational system needs revamping because for so many people, I mean, millions of Americans voted for this clown and they still voting for him even after this mess. There, there's something, there's something missing. And, and when you talk to them, like if you see the little interviews that people have with them, they don't they they don't even make sense. Like this one dude was like, Yeah, well, because I'm gonna vote, but I have to vote in person because mail mailing in is is that that doesn't work. So the guy said, But you know that that's how the president um votes. And he said, But that's different. He said, No, the president votes by mail. He said, Where? He said, by mail. The, that's how the he says. He says, yeah. And you hear some lady says, yeah, but that's different. And the guy says, yeah, but that's different. He says, well, how's that different? And the guy looks like, come on, man. We got to educate people. First of all, you know, ballots have always existed. They've always, always voted by mail. Always. You know, what do you think the military? They've always voted by mail. Absentee ballots have always. I wish Michelle could run, but she said, hell no. She don't want no part of this janky ass situation. You know, I think she's a, a patriot to her toenails. I think she has faith in, in, in the American citizens that want to see progressive movement. I think she wants no part of the system set up to, to do it. And besides, she was helping Barack run it anyway. There I with said a, it. With, with the black woman look. I know you not. You know what I'm saying? There you go. And the way the way the way Kamala was looking at at, at Pence. <laughs> that was mm. funny. Oh now she may have Michelle beaten faces. Yeah, she it's her face. Yeah. But, but you know what? I dig her. <laughs> I dig her because this is the thing. Somebody asked her something because uh, somebody said something about her negative and, and she was having an interview where, she, you know, it was just a regular conversation. She answered a question and they said, but what did you think when such and such said X, when Trump said blah, blah, blah. And she, she said, and then she stopped. She, she, she stops herself. And then she sat back. You could see her sit back a little bit. And then she smiled. And she said, well, I'll tell you what I think about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think his incompetence is just like, and then she, she went to read, to, she went to the shade room, got some reading glasses, read him, wrote him, and erased him with a smile on her face. I'm like, you know, there's something to that. If I could just react that way or... Or, or or change my react control my reaction man i have a i have a picture i want to send you to take a look at if i could find it on my camera roll uh when i was uh what people actually think um uh about the presidents and the in the russian president and you know all of the rest of them it is quite hilarious um to say the very least because they have created, David just sparked my brain on it because they've created dolls 
Um, and and uh, listen, I'm going to show you what he's talking about in five seconds. As soon as I get this here picture, you're going to laugh. Of course I am. Can I just say that David, David, you'll understand this after a while, David. You're not going to understand it tonight. I know you're not, but I'm going to say it anyway. David, you are my male voice, and you, you're you not going to understand it tonight, honey. I know. So it sounds <laughs> crazy. But no voice I've been looking for. And so I just had to say that. Better than Lou Rawls' voice? You'll never find. I didn't say he was the best voice ever. I didn't say the. Damn, you are the Lou, the female Lou Rawls' voice. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to open that picture and turn your phone sideways. Yeah, so it does this. I'm going to show mine to the audience. Can y'all see that? This is a window of a shop that I walked by in uh, Playa del Carmen, Mexico, that had these pushpin dolls sitting up in it. Can you tell who that is? There is from Bush to Clinton, I think that is. Hold on. They have every they, now they missed a, a president, but I think they got the presidents that they wanted to be able to practice on, including old oh boy in uh was that South Korea right here? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and, and look at the hair on that one, right? <laughs> Did you notice who's not here? Yep, Barack Obama. Yep. And he, and and you could buy them, and they had these long red pins that you could purchase as well. You know, which I thought was see there, folks know, folks know. <laughs> deep, man. That that's that's deep. Yeah, I had to take a picture of it. I was gonna buy one, but I was told I better not do that. So I just said, all right, all right, well, next best yeah, thing. Too. Well, comes around goes somewhere else i don't know where it goes um yeah so let's start getting ready prepared for our guest for tonight and i i think um this is gonna be i know actually this is gonna be a great show she's great spirit actually um Oh, she's talented. Uh, she's talented and she be working out. Girl is a baller too. Got to talk to her about that. Mm -hmm. Talented. She's purdy. You know, I make it my business to fall in love with every guest um, prior to them coming on to the show. Um... I watch and read and listen to them over and over and over again. Pops, I don't want you to get nervous. <laughs> Pops be like, Jay, but Jay. <laughs> well, don't worry. I, I won't molest the guests. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that um, I do that to fall in love guest and um i want to play this song i want to play this song right here y'all it's by our <laughs> special guest tonight and her yeah. name is terry dexter and she should be coming up shortly terry dexter cool. the name of this jam is strayed away why don't you communicate i thought that everything was okay something ain't right 
sweet I see a little frown on your face Communication is the key With you is where I wanna be So tell me what's on your mind If you let me know we can work it out Oh, I see a joy You know what? I gotta play that all over again. I don't, oh, I don't know. Okay. What? I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know what was going on there, and and it sounds good in any in, in BPM apparently. Let's do that again. Hold on, here we go. This is Terry Dexter. Let's do it from the beginning, please. We're we're the people. Come on, people. People. Here we go. WJBR Internet Radio in the basement with Javon and Therese. to communicate I thought that everything was okay but something ain't right between us I see a little frown on your face communication is the key the few is where I wanna be so tell me what's on your mind if you let me know
Wow, ladies and gentlemen, everybody in between, this is Miss Terry Dexter. How you doing, darling? I'm good. How y'all doing? I'm good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Good to see y'all and meet you uh, via virtual, the virtual world. <laughs> exactly, yeah. right? Yes, yes. Nice Thank to see you. you and nice to be seen. How are you yeah. doing? How are you? Good, really good. You know, just you know, taking things day by day, um, staying positive and staying creative and connected and, uh, you know, optimistic and positive, definitely. And grateful, very grateful. Mm. How are y'all yeah. How are you ladies doing? We're okay. We're hey, I don't know if you can see the chat that's on your screen to the right. Oh, um, yeah, you got a private chat area and you have a comments area. Um, okay, and you oh, can I watch as the studio as our co we call them our co uh, audience here um, responds to you know what's going on to the show. So we have a yeah, live. Maybe I should log. Do I have to log in? I think I definitely see. Oh, uh, you may not have to be logged in. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah. That that's see. Now you're trying to get the the guest to be Tammy too much. <laughs> I'm the only Tammy too much on the show. <laughs> she'll be back. She'll be back. She'll 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 get it. She okay. does. I'll, we you could just read. You don't have to log in to do it. You could just click on the. Yeah, that's okay. She. Oh my god. <laughs> all right. All right. Listen, okay. Terry. Terry, don't don't listen to Therese. Don't 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 listen to her directions. <laughs> don't worry about the chat. No, 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 no. no, no. Try to watch it. Not that I'm a look. I'm a. <laughs> you should have seen my screen. It was like blank. I was like, I'm gone. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, but was there something that you wanted her to to, to see in particular? To well, I you know generally you know the the comments I just you know because they're rolling along and you know they're saying oh. really wonderful things. But another way to do it is after the show. The show is housed in YouTube, so you can just punch it up and you can see your episode and you'll see all the comments there. Oh, God, thank you, every I love y'all and all, but. Hey, spreading love and hugs, and, and I appreciate everyone tuning in and, and having fun and talking with us and listening and looking and all that. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, ahead, just, yeah. just one thing I do want to tell you um, is that Ulysses is commenting and has been commenting that not only are you a friend, but he is a fan. Um, and you know that that your whole CD is fire, and oh, um, that particular thank track you. that I I played is your self titled. It's from your self titled CD, um, Terry Dexter. It, look, it's fly. Um, Levon says that you are gorgeous, and oh, I think you, oh. we, can all, we can all agree on that. I mean, not a blemish, and um, <laughs> yeah, and Thanks. and. Sunfire Talent, Alicia Collins is the one. I don't know whether or not you saw the blog that we um, had done for for you. Alicia is the one that created that blog. So shout out to Sunfire Thank Talent. You. Thank um, you. Because, you know, we want to spread the joy that is Terry Dexter. Thank you. Thank you so much. It means like the world, you know just everything um, leading up to this and this moment now. So just thank you from the bottom of my heart. And it's, you know. it's like the highlight, you know? So thank you. Thank you ladies. And I'm excited to be here. So grateful and, and just excited and, you know, and we that we can even be able to do it this way. Yeah. You know? so, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just feeling so good and so inspired right now and just lifted. So, yes. Hugs from here. <laughs> yeah, actually, right, right. Yeah. Detroit's finest. Detroit's finest. 
Yeah, the so town it, girl. Nice, nice. How how did you make the dichotomy from uh, the switch from D town to to L A to California? Um. So yeah, actually, I moved to New York first. Uh huh. So, yep. Yeah, when I first uh-huh. I signed to uh, Warner Brothers at the time, University Music. Warner Brothers, and I i was kind of living between Detroit and New York at the time, and then I just made the big move when I was like 19. I was like, I'm ready, I'm ready for this. And uh, yeah, so I lived in New York City first, and then I got another deal here, and then I moved to Los Angeles. I always thought, honestly, that I would go back to New York though, you know what I'm saying? Like, I love New York so much, and all my friends were there, and just I had this life there. And I came out here to record um, another project thinking, oh, in about a year, I'll go back to New York City. Mm-hmm. And I'm still here. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I love New York. I love LA too. You know, I just, it's funny how life is, you know, when you plan something and you really believe, you know, your life is going to be a certain way or you're going to live in a certain place. But yeah, I'm still here. But I, yeah, it's Detroit, New York, and then Los Angeles. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So I'm pretty sure, like, even from, um, because, you know, you have uh, D-Town is music, New York yeah. is theater, and 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 California is telling me it's a well-rounded career, to say the least, with yeah. uh, what projects you can kind of move around. You know, it's important that you yeah. move into, and now Atlanta being Hollywood South, you know, yeah. uh, it's kind of broadened it a bit for us on this end, which is great, which is great. Yeah. You can you can definitely do any one of those genres or, or art forms in any one of those cities, and that's what's great about it. You know, uh, I, I'm I feel like each city has evolved. You know, what I mean, like Atlanta, of course, with film and television, has gotten so huge there. Atlanta was always great with music as well. Mm-hmm. It True. Still is. Um, L.A. too. I feel like um, the theater world has grown as well here. Okay. And then New York, you, there's, I feel like it's always been new, uh, film and television as well, but I feel like that's gone. So each city kind of is moving and shifting around. And as artists, we can live pretty much in any one of those cities and be able to have our, you know, uh, be able to go and do our careers and no matter where you live. Here in LA is just where I choose to be now. I did think about Atlanta even at, at certain points and New York, going back to New York. But at this point, LA kind of, Definitely feeds all my passions. Yeah, nice. So, yeah. But yeah, you're right. All these cities. Yeah. And and what what are those passions? What what are your passions? Um. So music, of course. Born, you know, born singing. Like coming out my mama, like I'm gonna sing. You know, and, uh, <laughs> and songwriting. So singing and songwriting. I actually love both equally. I'd say. Um. And then I'm an actress, actor. Um, I love acting. Uh, that's a newer uh, art form for me, um, and I absolutely love it. I, I kind of look at it like it kind of like the extension of music because music took so much, uh, made sure that hey, we got to focus on music and writing. And I wasn't, I didn't really look into acting, even though I had opportunities to do so throughout my music career. I was so against it. I was like. No, music people, we should do music and not act and act that shit. I was so animate about that. Oh, and wow. Then, yeah, like for a long time. And then even uh, even got some opportunities to act. And I literally was like, nope, I'm go- I got music to do. And because uh, music was like, it's, it was very selfish in a good way. It was like, I need all of your, you know, your energy. And then, you know, uh, the cards and, and God stepped in and said, well, nope, now it's time to, to expand and and then I got into acting and I absolutely love it. And so, yeah, as far as uh, career wise, music, songwriting, acting, and then I've done some production behind the scenes, producing a couple short films. I do enjoy that. Maybe that'll be something I do later. Um, and so that, that career wise, yeah. So I'd say, yeah, music, songwriting, singing, songwriting, actress, and producing. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> I am <laughs> taking all of that. <laughs> yeah. Renaissance. That's what I'm talking about. The sky's the limit. And you know, as long as you are living your bliss and, and fulfilling your own creative juices, yes. we get to benefit from it. You know, yeah. I'm a little selfish to say that I get to benefit from <laughs> all of you making all the choices that you've made thus far. We get to benefit, we get to rock out to vibes and music. And you've also done some soundtrack scoring too, from what I understand. 
See, yeah. we may have may have seen her work in places that uh, and some of our favorite shows actually. Yeah, you know? it's yeah. definitely a different. Um, it's a, I'd say as a writer and and doing soundtracks and film and television, and a singer too, because um, so, sometimes you just vocally work or, or you lend your vocals to a project, film or TV wise, and then sometimes I'm asked to write something mm -hmm. I may not have sung or perform, and then sometimes do both. Um, it's totally different uh, creative process though than when obviously when you're an artist and I'm singing my, and wanting to write my own uh, words and, and have my own message and vision, then, and, and then being a part of storytelling and uh, with a film or television, it's, it's quite a different experience, but I love both of it at the same time. You know, I, I feel like I get, I feel like when it comes to film and television, I get to put on a different, not a costume, but like step into a whole different, uh, part of myself or an extension. Uh, and sometimes that's brand new depending on the project. And it, it's always very, very challenging uh, mm -hmm. depending on what that is, of course. Um, so yeah, it's totally different experience, but I, I love both all the same, you know? Yeah, but lots of film and television and I'm very grateful for all the projects. And every time I'm able to do that, um, it's, it's, it's quite a joy. You know? yeah. So tell us about your latest project and some of the motivation behind that particular song that we heard. What's that about? What motivated you to, you wrote that clearly, right? Well, straight away, the one you just played. Mm -hmm. Oh, so no, actually I didn't. Ah. Um, it's a, it's a song from my first album. And mm -hmm. it's, it's a, it's honestly, so I heard this song, my manager at the time played this song. Actually, I'm, I'm going to just share the story because why not? That's, it's about when things are meant to be. Mm -hmm. um, he, I was in the studio meeting with the Clemens brothers at the time who produced it. And they, they were just playing different music, you know, like, oh, here's, here's some of the stuff we've done and getting a vibe and meeting them for the first time. And they played that song and I heard it. And, you know, I'm very, I was very sensitive about make, trying to make sure I write or have a say so in the songs I'm singing, even with my first album or recorded and sang at that time. And I heard that and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have this song. There was an artist on the song that was that had already recorded it, and she was amazing too. I mean, she was an amazing singer. And I was like, oh my gosh, I know it was like a demo or a record was done. Um, but I was like, please give me this song. I love this song. And it wasn't available. So anyway, he, they said, well, you know, if, if something happens and it, it becomes, you know, free again or we, we're able to place it again, we'll let you know. Like six months later, I was checking in. I kept calling a manager at the time, just asking the label, is that song available? Whatever happened to that song? They were like, if you don't stop with that song, you know, and I'm like, I want to record that song. So just as I started to kind of let it go, just believe that, you know what, it's not, I guess it's not meant. I got a phone call from the head of my production company. He said, I got a surprise for you. And he said, the song is available. I flew to New York City. Mm -hmm. Um, like a couple of days later, I was sick. I remember I was so sick. I said, I don't care. I'm singing this song, recording it sick. So that's what happened in the middle of the night, uh, recorded it in the middle of like being sick. And, uh, and that's how straight away happened and, and was born, you know, on the record. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you don't sound sick at all. Actually. That's a great, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. It, was, no, it, was so, it was so crazy. I was like, I'm sick. I can't believe it. I'm getting ready to record my dream song and I'm sick. But you know what? When you're sick, though, I think a lot of performers can relate. Something happens in your body, like it's the spirit. You know what I mean? It's your gift saying, okay, we're going to push aside this physical mm. challenge. And you almost sing better. Mm. You almost do, I would say, hit higher notes. And you just, perform better sometimes. I mean, that's not always, but sometimes it could actually bring out a better performance in you because you, it's like your, that passion comes out so much to want to make sure that it's done right or, or that, you know, or you do your best performance. So your physical body kind of pulls out elements of itself that you didn't know you had. So that's what you hear on straight away. All those notes and everything. I, I, I couldn't believe it after I recorded. I was like, oh, I'm so sick. And I can't believe I hit this no. I didn't even know I could hit that no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a dope story. That's a dope story because um, Robin S said um, when she recorded "Show Me Love," you know that yeah. first opening note. Ah, uh, that that 
note that everybody knows, yeah. right? That except yeah. for me. Um, she said she was sick, and that was like a one take. That song was like a one take. Yeah. And she said wow. now she has to live with it, and she has to sing that note all the time. And you know, <laughs> I know. and the audience is like, you better hit that note, that one. Note, <laughs> no, that's right. No, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's interesting. I love that story too. That's because you know when that song comes off, you hear that note, everybody's like, oh yeah, I know. <laughs> that's yep. good to know too. <laughs> yeah, you hear that note, right? Let's right. talk about this this other song. There's there's a song that you you have called Crazy, and we we were just talking about everything that's going on politically, just so that you you are aware. You know, we talk about on this show, we talk about politics all the time. Um, mm -hmm. I just voted today, and I'm I'm very happy about that that I was <laughs> able to vote because yeah. you know this is this is some rough times. Um, this has been the this has been the craziest of times. So, talk about the song "Crazy" and how you know how it came about, and um, I, I think it's yeah. relevant to where we are today. You know, so this uh, co-wrote this record with Jamie Jazz, and this particular record actually was the very first record that we wrote for uh, mm -hmm. the Listen Project. And at the time, my sister, uh, she's a Marine, and she was just getting ready to go and to Iraq to, mm -hmm. to fight, you know, or to serve, I'll say. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember that at that point, it was kind of, it was during that a lot of, you know, the Iraq, mm -hmm. Iraq and Afghanistan situation when the military, you know, we were really at, with tension going on there. And just at the time too, there, I, I just felt like there was a lot of tension in the country at that time as well. Um, mm -hmm. I had just lost uh, somebody very close to me, very tragically. Jamie was going through something at the time that was um, really intense for him. And I just remember, man, it just came from, you know, getting ready to see my sister go serve, losing my friend tragically. He, just being affected by all that was going on around us. Cause at that time it was tense, you know what I mean? Like just mm -hmm. uh, at the time, I mean, I remember just like what was on uh, the internet with like the, the, the headings and you know, the, the violence all over the world and just things going on even in our country as well. And so that song, we wrote it and like, it was so fast, you know cause we were both kind of in that same zone and we just wrote it probably like a, maybe an hour. And I just, got, mm -hmm. it, I would, we wrote a verse I go in there and sing the verse and record it. And then we wrote the hook. I go in and sing the hook. And it was really, it really captured uh, a reflection of the world at the time. And it, it is really interesting because to know and that this song would be so reflective of today, you know, what's going on in the world today in our country. I just, just got, just before coming on here, watching Obama talk and uh, yeah. speak today, really, you know, and just, just feeling like, Oh, we got what thirteen days left. Let's get to this day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, the tension, and we can finally get to some positivity um, and on and just kind of quiet the noise out. There has been some really positive things though that's been happening. An awakening that has definitely been happening in the last you know six months. Um, but there's just so much negativity and there's so much frustration and people angry and 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 just violence. And I'm you know it's just like let's get to this. Let's get to voting and let's just, you know, keep our eye on the prize. Let's bring in peace and unity and just really trying to stay positive in this country and just really, you know, bringing everybody together the best way we can. And that's all I'm thinking about. But yeah, crazy does in an interesting way kind of capture a lot of the chaos that's happening right now as we speak, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's let's kick it. Let's let's play it. This is crazy yeah. by Miss Terry Dexter. And you're hearing it here in the basement with Javon and Therese and Terry Dexter. Switzerland, to Switzerland, 
It's time for you to work. Looking what's in it. It's so crazy. You know, I have to let you know, Ms. Dexter, that that song is going into rotation on WJBR Internet Radio, which is a 24-hour broadcasting station, which is licensed by BMI, ASCAP, and SOCAN here in the United States, Canada, and the UK. I'm telling you, that song is fire right there. And shame on me as a DJ for not knowing it previously. It's thank you just for you know supporting and I and I love that you love it you know if you, I if do you, love it thank you who are some of the musicians playing on that it's dope um oh the the musicians yes oh you know who was that um I I think it was um I know it was what is it uh, uh, uh with the J oh my gosh he's gonna be like Terry you care about my name um um. We have, it's, he's with the J. Everybody, we all love and adore him. He plays. He plays on a lot of great things. J, J, um, I'm so sorry. I can't. Ever, it was with the, with the J. Jimbo. Jeff. Um, ah, <laughs> he said he Jimbo. Was, you know, yeah. It's J, J. Oh, I'm so sorry. I feel like I gotta look. It's okay. It. That's okay. It'll come back as soon as the show is over, and you'll he's be like, like ah. yeah. He did all the gu guitar parts. Goodness, and he's killing the bass. You can hear it. Yeah. 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 Oh gosh! I remember, as we're doing, I'm gonna remember because I have to shout him out. He was amazing. He came in and did all the wonderful parts too. 
Yeah, so, yeah, the licks are um, the licks are really cool. It takes you on a journey, and you just like yeah. even even the the vocal uh, gymnastics, gymnastics that you did with your your own vocals, how you yeah. just wrapped around the groove. I particularly like it because you're right in the pocket. I liked it. Oh, his name is Jubo. Jubo. Ah, Jubo. Thank you, Jubo. He's like, get my name right. Yeah, yeah, Jubo. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just gonna say that that song is nice, and and yeah, I just wanna, I just wanna scratch it up. I just wanna scratch it up. (laughs) Thank y'all. Thank you. That record, uh, it comes from the uh, the Listen album, um, and that. The particular listen project what we really wanted to do was each record uh, uh was reflective meaning socially conscious uh spiritual uh we made sure that every song reflected that could it either inspire you uh make you feel faith or, or positive bring you together with loved ones i mean i we really made that our purpose with the whole project so Crazy was one of those uh, records that was featured on that that album with ten songs. So yeah, but I'm glad that you you like I it. Love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I do. Melvin Browning wants to know what singers inspired you growing up. Oh, so I absolutely love my father and my mom. My dad's a big, huge music person, a lover. So he introduced me, of course, Whitney, and I loved her. I just wanted to be Whitney Houston all day. Um, you know, my father loved and made, and of course, I love uh, Stephanie Mill. Um, my very first concert, my dad, he's like, I'm going I'm to take you so you can see a real singer, see how she sings. And it was Stephanie Mills. I remember, I remember seeing her as a little girl, just like, oh, my gosh. So I just started singing her songs and, and really following her. Uh, Anita Baker, then uh, Mariah Carey, um, Mary J, um, mm. Tony Braxton, Aretha Franklin, of course. My dad played her every day in the house, you know, explained all the songs to me. <laughs> um, I love Aretha, of course. And then, you know, like the men, like uh, Luther and Prince. Um, oh, gosh. You know, the interesting part of like the 80s and 90s was. R&B music, like you had, oh. you had to know how to sing, you know. So everything you heard was a great, pretty much either not not a, if, when I meet great singers, I mean singers that have authenticity and maybe not so always vocal acrobatics and being able to have the physical ability, but just had that sound and that 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 level and and. And and um, yeah, that that higher level, I'd say, of understanding their musicality and sound. That was all the '80s and '90s. That's what we were exposed to, pretty much. Mm-hmm. So, like so all those singers, you know. I mean, I can go back when I was little, like Mickey Howard, Vesta Williams, what? I mean, all them. You know, um, oh gosh, uh, what was that? Remember that? Eight? Oh gosh, like Angela Wimbush. I mean, you know, oh, God, love <laughs> that sounds amazing, yeah. Angela. Mm-hmm. You know, a great singer that she's she's also uh, now my friend, and I I've worked with her. She actually worked on the Listen project. I, I made one of her and her sister's albums on the Listen project. But an, another great singer of that I absolutely adored and looked up to because they were really big in Detroit. And I, I don't know if you all remember. Um, you remember the group Perry, the Three Sisters? Parody. Perry, P-E-R-R-I, Perry. So they say, they, yeah, the lead, the lead was uh, is Lori Perry, and it's her and her two sisters. And man, I yeah. mean, they had, a, they had a, some hits in Detroit, but they were, you know, they were worldwide. Um, but they had a record that I remade for the Listen album. I had to remake this record called No Place to Go. And Lori wrote it about the homeless experience, you know, on the street, not judging people and and, and learning how to um, see people for who they are. But Lori Perry is another great uh, idol of mine and singer. Um, her and her singers are her, her and her sisters are all amazing. But talk talking about a singer that had an amazing ability, but also very specific sound that you never you don't hear nobody else had. So if you get a chance. Uh, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure once you listen to, if you look Perry up, 
you'll be like, oh yeah, I remember that. Or maybe, you know, oh yeah, I kind of remember. Um, but Lori and her sisters and Lori, you know, the, is talking about an era of singers. I mean, she was one of, definitely one of my idols. I mean, I'm, since I was a little girl, so Lori Perry. <laughs> nice. Thank you, thank you, definitely. You know, the, the Detroit sound, so many great singers. Yeah. It came out of D-Town, you know, I'm thinking of another one. I don't know if you are familiar with the group Brownstone. What? Yeah. Yeah, Nikki Gilbert, Absolutely. that voice came out of D-Town. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I love Brownstone. Oh, my goodness. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. All, all three, all amazing. Amazing. Yeah. That's the thing about Detroit. It's interesting because it's funny because when I grew up, I grew up in the church. My uncle's a pastor. And everybody could sing in the church. My aunt sang, all the kids could sing. I mean, it was it was like the, we were all just singing. And and then I would visit other churches and perform in all you know, with my uncle and just travel around. I mean, it was like a whole bunch of singers at every church and everybody could sing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so when I, it's interesting because, and play, like a lot of great musicians and singers. And so when I, when I moved, when I went to New York as a teenager and I, I was like, well, wait a minute, everybody's, supposed to know how to sing, you know, because I was so used to no matter where I went in Detroit mm -hmm. uh, with other singers, everybody, I mean, could blow, blow. <laughs> and I mean, kids, like little kids too. So <laughs> Detroit, you know, I feel like a lot of that, the influence and the inspiration, how we learn our musicality is through the church. Um, we have, you know, we're a city that's very, uh, we have a very rich city of of churches. I mean, I went to two, my uncle's church and then um, another church too that I kind of went between the two. But, um, and learning musicality through gospel and church music, it definitely, and learning how to sing to God and, and how to express yourself, especially as a child, by the time you're on stage, you know, and having to perform in front of people, you've already learned how to connect with your spirit and reach an audience in the church. When, when you move into a professional career as a singer, singing R&B or, or pop music, whatever genre you sing, you just kind of have that connect already embedded in you. So mm -hmm. that's the thing about Detroit. A lot of singers definitely have that gospel background and we've all pretty much have brought that into our pop careers or R&B careers or soul careers, whatever it is that you, you sing. So that's one thing about D-Town. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. what, what is your favorite, your favorite gospel song to sing? What song... What's your go to gospel song? Oh gosh. The one that, uh, so my aunt, my aunt Patty. Hey, Auntie Patty, if you listen. Um, <laughs> hey, Auntie <a>, Patty. <laughs> she's a great, great singer, and uh, she would teach me all my songs that, that I would sing um, on Sunday. And the one that um, I love to sing, that, you know, we worked so hard on this song, and I sang it a lot whenever I could, is Because He Lived. Because he lives, <laughs> I can't face tomorrow. Yeah. Mm. So, so that's my favorite song. Yeah. You see how effortless that was, Jay? <laughs> that can I can I can I can I true confession here? I knew once I asked her about her favorite um, gospel song <laughs> that, that she's going to sing. I knew it. I, I knew it. That's just, you know, when you raised up in the church, you know, and yes. <laughs> you're a singer and you've been singing and singing and singing. It, it, it is effortless, you know? If, it, <laughs> you can't help it. Spirit is it's here. a blessing, man. It's a okay. blessing. It's a beautiful, beautiful yeah. blessing, you know, um, yeah. to be able to, to, just let it out like that. God, what a <laughs> we need more of that. We uh, do. I couldn't help it. And y'all inspire me too. Just this, you oh. know, such great energy, honestly. Even through the virtual, even through the computer screen. Um, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You know, you're just experiencing two folks that love what they do and love. Uh, just being able to support and and get to know people and and check on folks because you know we both have the yep. check on folks kind of spirit. We'd swoop down in your living room if we could just to make sure folks are okay and and uh, That's you know you know Absolutely. life still has to move and we just want to be part of the elevator, the unicorn committee. <laughs> and, and once once you've been on this show, you are instantly family. 
family. family. So that means that means you you forgot to say something that you really wanted to talk about. Hit us up and say, hey, look, when can y'all book me back on the show? Because we need to talk about what happened whenever or or this new project or that I'm getting ready, whatever it is. And oh, I forgot. Y'all didn't play this record. I want to talk about that. Whatever, whatever. Just thank you. I love that. Your... We, I love this that. is yours now. Thank you. Oh, and I'll be calling. I'll be like, wait, I forgot. No. <laughs> no, that's not. I mean, that's this, you, know, you know, we're, we're not women that, that, mix a whole lot of words we can if we want but you know that part is very very true for us in terms of just you know particularly because you're a writer because you know there's publishing and royalties that come out of being stuff being played so absolutely like javon mentioned we are we are a 24-hour um radio station and guess what there's no payola we get to pick and choose what we want you don't have that that um, as a singer you know even though it's public radio and i promise you i won't get on a rant javon about this but it's public radio but it's not much diversity on it you know and and that was part of the 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 inspiration you know for it just to be the way we get to say hey put that in rotation because we like it and i love what you ladies are doing this is amazing i mean when ulysses reached out you know and i and 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 it took me five minutes yeah Ah, love it, love it, and love you for your yes. We appreciate. Your Absolutely, yes. this is I and, love. This is amazing. Thank you. What y'all doing is is so needed, <laughs> so much needed, and 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 just everything. I mean, and being here now, being in the moment with you, and speaking with you, and sharing, it's even more amazing than I initially thought. I always I knew it was gonna be great, but it's even better it's just being here actually so i mean congratulations too congratulations on this um, thank you thank you putting together and creating and having vision is one thing but like bringing it to life and making it happen is a whole other ball game and y'all are making it happen and it's just growing and growing and and, it's, and i'm honored to be a part of that so thank you thank you for allowing me to be a part yeah and 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 stay tuned. It's it's only going to get bigger. It's only going to oh, get yeah. better. Oh, yes, <laughs> it, 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 you're right. It's growing, and um, you are now part of it forever, forever. Um, so don't try to hide. We know how to get you. Oh, I'm not. You, <laughs> especially, especially since you could just blow at at a whim. She just opened up and just let it. Out. I was, you know, I I personally am very impressed with that kind of thing. Now that's what I, yeah. The same. I've been disappointed in the past, which is why we're going to digress to a song called "Disappointed." Yeah. Talk to me about it. You see how I did that? That was soaky. That was soaky. <laughs> you know, yeah, disappointed. Wow. So that was uh, produced by Nissan Stewart and co-written it's with uh, Sammy McKinney and myself and Nissan. <laughs> and um did you uh, say Sam McKinney? Sammy McKinney. Do I know so why does that sound familiar? You might probably I'm sure at some I mean you Sammy McKinney songwriter, um, Los Angeles. He's from maybe, here. Maybe. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking I may know him, but go ahead. I'm yeah. sorry. Oh gosh, he's he's wonderful. Um like a great mentor from to me, a great friend, big brother, father figure for a long time. Known him since I was, I first met him when I was like uh, 13, 12, 13. Um, and he kind of raised me in the business a lot. Um, mm -hmm. So actually Sammy has uh, passed on to mm -hmm. you know, the glory. Um, and so Disappointed was one of the last records that we wrote together. So whenever I hear this and, and whenever I'm able to share it, it really, I feel like Sammy's sitting next to me like, all right, girl, let's let's share this one. And and so he's here in spirit with us today. Um, so this record, um, a lot of it was played live, you know, and I really wanted to do something that was all live and not mm -hmm. programmed. And <clears throat> so, you know, the musicians came in, did their thing. Nissan, you know, who's a great drummer and producer, I mean, and so he put, you know, he made sure that, okay, I'm gonna give you this live experience. And I mean, you talk about singing. Ugh. 
that session that night, I was sweating and I was like, woo! It just took my whole body to record it. But I'm so happy and proud of this record and what we were able to do with it. So it was it was more of like a record we did that we just wanted the streets, the streets and and a, people to listen to, not necessarily buy it or anything, and not for sale. More like you know, we created this. Let's have it. Hey, let's have a listen. And and we got a lot of great support with it, and it got a lot of good play, and and people loved it, and and so I'm I'm glad we were able to do that and and share it. So this is definitely one of records like I would need a whole day of sleep <laughs> <laughs> before I get up there and sing that thing. And Jim at the time too it was kind of a situation I was dealing with um, that inspired the lyrics. Mm, um, there's always that one. Situation. You hear it in my performance that night. Even Sammy's like, dang, girl, like, what's going on with you? I was like, you know what's going on. So that's what you hear in disappointment as well. The real life experience in the, in the record. Yeah, she was so, yeah. disappointed. <laughs> nice. And uh, here we go. Here we go. Yes. When we first met, you smiled at me, something changed in my heart. I never believed that I'd find someone whose love would warm me like the sun. I gone your every word and took them all as bad. Now I see that was all the last I'd do anything But you were too blind to see What you had in me I'm Yeah. 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 
Awesome, awesome. Thank you for wow. Yeah. wow. You can hear the you can hear the truth. <laughs> yes. The anger. Yeah. I was angry. I was like, I got something to say tonight. And they were like, okay, we're we ready. And I was give me that mic. I remember, you know, dealing with this, that's what's amazing about being able to being able to write and perform uh what you're truly feeling inside. It's healing. It's a it's it's such yeah. a great healer. That really writing that song and and recording that really helped me a lot deal with what I was dealing with at the time. So that's what's great about art. It, re it reflects where we are in, the, in, in that moment, spiritually and emotionally. That's the great part of it. You know? Can I play a little game with you, Terry? Yeah, yes. <laughs> wow, I love that. You see, she's the first one that's like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Not, she's yeah. not a punk at all. I'm digging See, it. Usually people go, uh oh, what you talking about? Yeah. Well, we, yeah. play a little, we play a little word association game on the show. And we call it rapid fire. What rapid fire is, it's a, a, a chance for our audience to get a little peek behind the veil. Now, I say a word and you say the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. So I'll do five words, you know, we just go back and forth. And then Javon will take over and she'll do five words with you back. Can I just put one word? Yeah, with the first thing that comes to mind, no thought. There's no wrong answer, no thought. Okay. The first thing that comes to mind. Okay. Ready? Yes. Melody. Love. Instrumentation. Faith. Children. Power. Community. Empathy. God. Heart. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Javon, you're up next. Beauty. One. That one comes to mind. One. Food. Joy. <laughs> Dancing. Freedom. Mm. Crying. I'm sorry? Crying. Strength. Power. Family. One more. Woman. Universe. Mm. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. I love that. that. Powerful. Yeah. You, you allow me to see myself in a new <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's interesting when you when you look back, like if you if you look back 
at the show, even if you just fast forward to this part yeah. and you yourself responding. And it's funny because I've I've done that and and I'm like, Dag, why didn't I say and 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 then I'll say, but now my first word is something different, you know? And it, it's all yeah. about the moment. Yeah. In the moment. Because the you, you see it's just blank. And then that one thing, that's the, I'm, I loved how you prepped me too, because it was like, just whatever comes to mind, not just say one thing. And it's interesting because it's not a lot of things. It's one word. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm seeing like, there's, it's blank, there's nothing. And then all of a sudden that one word comes in. So it's not a lot of things where I have to go like, wait, which one? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just one. I don't know why. That is that's really interesting. I'll be trying this with everybody now. Every time I meet somebody, every time and, and, you know when we can meet up with people, <laughs> able, I'm just gonna be like, I got a game. I'm, we got to do this because it does <laughs> allow you to, to for one, feel enlightened and more connected. So thank you for that. Wow, wow. Thank you. It also helps our studio audience because you know some. This isn't. We don't. We don't want to be the typical uh you know our we have no stock interview questions other than how you doing and that's not rhetorical it's it's mm -hmm. we want to know because we're going to ask you in another way if we feel like we're getting a rhetorical response because we sincerely want to know how you're doing but everything else you know sometimes when people are used to large radio junkets and they do that all the time um they have stock answers you know, um, but if they don't know what the question is, they can't answer it, you know, and, and this is giving people, like we said, a peek behind the veil, like what actually goes on in Terry's mind? Yeah. You know, what does she think? Yeah, I love that. Thank you. It was, we got so it. Now we're going, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead, please. Oh, okay. So now we're going to ask you for a favor. We're going to ask you for two drops, um, a drop for this show and a drop for the radio station. Okay. Um, okay. So the drop for this show is, hi, this is Terry Dexter, and you're in the basement with Javon and Therese. Okay. Right, right now? Ready? <clears throat> yes. And you, can, you can sing it. You can make it however you want to do it. I, I'm just saying it's up to you. Oh, of course. I, of course. Are you going to say, are you going to say action? <laughs> I'll, I'll say action, whatever you like. Ready? Action. Hi, everybody. You are listening to In the Basement. Can I start over? Let me say it. Yes, you can. Hey, everybody, what's up? You are experiencing In the Basement with the fabulous Javon and the amazing Therese. Perfect. That was perfect. You got to say who you are. Can we do one more but say who you are? Yes. Okay, cool. Here we go. Hey everybody, this is Terry Dexter, and you are experiencing In the Basement with the fabulous Javon and the amazing Therese. Thank you. That was that was very nice. I love that. I'm fabulous. I'll, I'll have to take that with me. Yes, <laughs> That's probably yes, the point of most. Yes. Thank you. That's the part I'm going to play over and over again. I'm just going to cut that out. <laughs> Fabulous, Javon. That's, you know, an editor's choice. Editor's choice. But, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I <digress. laughs> oh, so Okay, so, so the drop for the radio station. Okay, so the call letters are WJBR Internet okay. Radio. WJBR. It's yes. Internet okay. Radio. Okay. Okay. Uh, so introduce myself, say your names, and then WJBR. And what about no. in the basement? No? No, no. no. <laughs> and you don't have to say our names either. You just say, hi, this is Terry Dexter, and you're listening to WJBR. Okay. Got it. Okay. Hey, everyone. This is Terry Dexter, and you're listening to WJBR Internet Radio. That was dope. Nice. That was dope. That was really dope. Was Thank dope. you so much. That was dope enough for me to stay up a little late tonight and cut <laughs> and, 
and put it and and program that into the station tonight. <laughs> I usually, I want to usually ask, takes me a while. But I want to yeah, ask you, where are you based? Where are you at? Where where am I? Where are you at at this at this Joyzy. Jersey. Are you in Jersey? Oh, I'm in Jersey, and um, actually, this broadcast is international, so mm-hmm. we're being seen all over the world, and um, I love we that. we have, yeah, we have a, a large following in Germany right now for some reason. Love it. Hey, Thank you. hey Germany. Hey, world. Thank you so much, Germany. Yeah. But we we you will world. have a. a in the Philippines, Japan, yeah, but that's the internet, you know, and we're grateful yeah. for everybody who listens everywhere. Absolutely. So, congratulations! You know, Goodness. Thank you, yeah. thank you. It's a wonderful thing, and we we feel blessed. I know I do, and um, you know, I just want to remind everybody, please, if you have not yet voted, make sure you vote. Make sure that you help your senior citizens who may have a difficult time realizing that they can't go to the regular polling place or that they can just, you know, drop it in the mailbox or go to the, the election, the, the new boxes that they have out there. Yeah. yeah. Resi Poo. And, you yeah. <laughs> and uh, we just got a news alert from our producer um, and it's uh, from CNN and it's saying the feds uh, say that Russia and Iran have interfered with our presidential election. Um, and they've, uh, please check out CNN um, wow. folks and, and make sure you stay vigilant. Um, they are really, really trying. And this is why we say why it's important to vote, because if it wasn't, they wouldn't be going out of their way to do all this. Yeah, exactly. Terry, tell everybody where they can find you, please. Oh, yeah. And definitely vote. I just looked up. I, I mailed my ballot in last week. I just tracked it and it's accepted and it's all good. Yes. 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 Vote, vote. Goodness. Um, please. Um, Yes, yeah, so uh, I'm on Instagram, Terry Dexter, a little slash, Terry slash Dexter on Facebook, Terry Dexter. Um, um, I'm on uh, a lot of my, uh, my music is on pretty much every music platform uh, from Amazon to Spotify to uh, iTunes. And I'm very grateful for, to be able to have my music all over. And, you know, that's a dream come true. So, yeah, you can find me on all the great music platforms and on social media, Instagram, Facebook. Um, yeah, there and there you go. That, that's me. And don't forget, she's also written a lot of the television and film, The L Word, Not Easily Broken, Kings and Queens, Burn Notice, Cover, The Game, Deliver Us from Eva, and Family Guy. You can find her work there too. And she's- oh, I forgot. So I'm in a, uh, I have to have to say this uh, to all the House Divided family. So we just finished season three of House Divided, which is mm-hmm. a, a series, a drama series. Uh, that is on uh, UMC Network. Okay. So you can check me out as Eileen um, on UMC's A House Divided. So, oh, yes. awesome. Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations. That's big. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to you, both of you ladies. I am so honored and to see this amazing platform to be a part of it and experience it today. I mean, thank you for allowing me and um, all artists to, to come and share and, 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 you know, just feel the love. So, I mean, I see TV show for y'all. I mean, just don't forget about me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. We'll be calling you again soon. So you just hang in there. Cause we, we, we're going to be calling you again soon, shortly. Yes, actually, and, and, you know, sending love to the East. We're LA. I love that East coast, yeah. West coast. Hey. That's what's up. Know. That's what's up. Holla. <laughs> yes, thank you for spending time with us. And we're honored to have you on the show. We are honored. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you, know? thank you. And, and we appreciate your yes. And thank you all for, for spending time with us tonight. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And um, please don't forget to vote. Good night. Good night. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Hi, this is.
Mesa, and you're in the basement with Javon and Therese. Perfect. That's right, Leon, for some of your favorite movies, and I'm at brunch in the basement with uh, Therese and Javon. Stay here, stay here with me. Stay here, stay here with me. Stay here, stay here with me. Still in the basement, no longer alone, with my homegirl Therese on the microphone. Music politics are just chatting it up. Brunch in the basement, see, that's what's up. You never know who might run through. Legendary artist or someone brand new. You miss a lot when you miss one day. At least that's what I heard somebody say. But it doesn't really matter what whoever says. It's always a good show with Javon and Therese. Yeah. Brunch in the basement with Javon and Therese. Yeah. Let's see who we got yeah. today. Come on, everybody's today. a friend in my head. I already know everybody. <laughs> Whatever you know, yeah. One day I'll tell you about me and Shaka Khan, but, you know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she doesn't know anything about it. But anyway, <laughs> no, she doesn't. She just she wasn't even there actually. But anyway, <laughs> all our losses though, Jay. She's like, she's got our ears and I'm gonna send y'all some. I'll definitely get an address. I'll send y'all some. You can send me some cologne because I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I just in that. case I should meet Shaka Khan, I want to smell really, you know, oh, nice. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, dokey, babe, whatever you say. With time, so. And we thank you for that. Thank you. Yes, thank well, you. thank you. This part, that little piece, I'm just going to keep and play it all the time for myself. <laughs> but no, I'm just teasing.